<clears throat> okay, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to do a quick video and move on in our study in uh, Second Delirium, the Alchemy of the Word. Um, this is where we left. Uh, right, this is where <laughs> we left off. Uh, Rimbaud writes, My mind turned sour. I said farewell to the world in poems, something like ballads, right? So we're looking at the prophetic uh, faucet of this. And this is, we were talking about what we covered in the last video. Um, this is our calling in Isaiah 53. So our mind turned sour. Um, you know, also refer to the Nirvana song, Big Long Now. That's a good uh, one to refer to. Um, I said farewell to the world in poems. Something like ballads. It's like saying farewell to the word, I mean to the world and staying in the word. And especially in this uh, day and age, um, all the world's poetry is the word of God. So that's a way to look at it. Uh, a very beautiful notion to kick off this video because then Rimbaud goes into a song from the highest tower. Now we covered a song from the highest tower. This is an earlier poem he wrote that could be found within his poem, The Triumphs of Patience. They are slightly different. Now, a song from the highest tower that you'll find in the Triumph of Patience is actually um, about, you know, we talked about this. Rimbaud, here he says the season we can love, but in the Triumph from Patience version, he says uh, the season that all hearts can love. And this is about God severing uh, the bloodline of family ties. And... Um, and all that kind of stuff uh, revealing itself. That's what A Song from the Highest Tower in the Triumphs of Patience is about. So that's amazing, or at least as far as we can understand so far. But so what's interesting in this sub poem, this is the first time uh, Rimbaud gives a title to this poem, right? In the other ones, there's no title to these poems, okay? To these little sub poems. He, he does not title them though they are earlier poems that he has written uh, that are slightly different. Are there prophetic reasons for all this stuff? I do believe yes, but I don't have that answered. Um, we're just trying to understand the context of the text uh, before we could, and then, you know, then it should, we should go back and then start unlocking all the keys to these doors and understanding the prophetic mysteries behind them. But we just have to understand what he's actually talking about to begin with. So, so it's interesting um, in this poem, he, a song from the highest tower is titled. Uh, again, this version is slightly different. Um, so who is the highest tower? That is Miriam of Magdala, which is the church. And we also know, if you've been following along, that is the kingdom on the earth. Life will be like a fairy tale. Uh, hence why this poem is called The Alchemy of the Word. All this stuff we've been covering. So let's, uh, let's go over it. Um, understanding it is not that hard. Let it come, let it come. The season we could love. Now, in the previous version, he said the season where all hearts can love. But for some reason, he has the season we can love. I have waited so long that at length I forgot and leave unto heaven my fear and regret. Okay, so when we're walking with the Lord, um, every time you look, you study a life of a saint, um, it's always about them clearing their dross, their Isaiah 53 calling. Um, they're led into solitary. They live years and years, maybe a decade or two alone, clearing their draws and in affliction and uh, refining themselves and strengthening themselves in the Lord. So this is a standard um, that the Lord uh, gives to those who are his chosen. Who are those who are his chosen? Those who choose to be chosen, right? Many are called, but few are chosen. So it has nothing to do, God doesn't have favorites, it's just most people don't answer their full call, don't say yes to their full call to the Lord, because we are called to uh, heartbreak, but that heartbreak is even more joy and even more um, happiness. So, um, you know, in it for the long haul. So, uh, you know, me, it's been, it's been like 12, 12 years for me personally, so I could absolutely relate to this, you know, my trial and tribulation hasn't finished yet. I've waited so long that at length I forget and leave unto heaven my fear and regret. It's just like, so a sick thirst darkens my veins, okay? Um, Jesus writes, 
We are always supposed to be hungry and thirsty for the word. Uh, we are never supposed to be fully satisfied because when we are fully satisfied, um, then we go blind and that becomes our slavery. So, you know, we are always supposed to be hungry and thirsty for the word of God, always wanting more, uh, never finding enough and all that kind of stuff. So that's the way I interpret it in this faucet. Um, a sick thirst darkens my veins. Let it come, let it come. The season we can love, okay? So this is our Isaiah 53 calling. Now this stanza is actually pretty interesting. I had to meditate on it, but I figured it out. So the green field to oblivion falls, overgrown, flowering with incense and weeds. So this would be the second apostasy of the kingdom, right? Eventually, this season from which we can love will eventually fall, right? So there will be an apostasy. Um, again, and the end of that age, okay? So that's what that stanza will be talking about. And um, Rimbaud closes with, and the cruel noise of dirty flies. Um, flies symbolically, we've covered this before, represent like Satan casting out Satan. Um, God's wrath, uh, the plagues of Egypt were like flies. Um, it's the recompense to our disobedience to God. So it could be like Satan casting out Satan. You know, flies feed on poop. They, flee, they feed on dirt. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So the cruel noise of dirty flies. Okay, so we're talking about the apostasy. And Rimbaud, of course, closes. Let it come. Let it come. The season we can love. So um, if you meditate on this on your own with understanding that, you can see that this wonderful night and day dynamic Rimbaud continues to echo. So uh, very beautiful. And again, um, I strongly recommend uh, comparing uh, a song from the highest tower in the triumphs of patience. Um, uh, because it is a little different. And so, I don't know, it's very beautiful when you start piecing all this stuff together. Okay, guys, thank you for tuning in. All of us.